Hello and welcome back to the Watch Pile. Now, as last time we left the Watch Pile, um, we were starting at 132 movies to be watched. Of course, movies get added to the collection. Uh, again, excessively, although looking at the next couple of months, things are ramping down a lot, but it should be good. So... As per usual with these videos, I am going to jump into the titles that I picked up. Uh, why I picked them up? Am I ever going to watch them? <laughs> that we shall discover together. So, first up, I got my um, 88 Films sale package came in. These were all great, 33% off. Uh, I had to jump on quite a few of them. I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan, so I picked up the 7% solution. Um, I've heard it's a, a pretty good one. It's got a great cast. What more do you need to say? Next up, I picked up um, All Deceased Except the Dead, a movie by Pupi Avati. Um, it's the Italian collection. I'm pretty much down for any of the Italian collection. I also used the sale uh, as a time to pick up a few of the 88 Asian films that I didn't have in my collection, like um, Clan of the White Lotus and King Hughes. Come drink with me, which, uh, yeah, both pretty great and well-renowned films within the 80 Asia range, which I didn't pick up. Uh, another Italian collection was Violence in a Woman's Prison, which, again, is the Italian collection. I have all them. I want all them. I love my Italian movies. And then last, which is one that I, was, I wasn't I was 100% sold on getting until I got the 33% off. I would have picked it up at some point. That price was as good as any. It's Yun Biao's On The Run, which I've heard is pretty fantastic, pretty bleak um, and something to behold. So I, I, I'm kind of glad to have got that. Then there was Christmas. I think you've already seen these ones, but I've got the uh, the Thing 4K, um, which is the the fantastic Titan Occults edition, the kick-ass edition, as I call it. I uh, love it. I got Blood Beat from Vinegar Syndrome. This is from Andy as well. I watched this one. Uh, there's, this one comes with a, an older slipcase, which is much sought after, that people pay a fortune for. After seeing this movie, wow, it's it's not good. It's not good. One of the few Vinegar Syndrome movies I really didn't like. Um, so there, yeah. Um, some Error 444 films, which is, you know, Red Spell, Spells Red, which looks a great Category 3 film. And then Centipede Horror. Uh, again, two movies that just are right up my street. Cannot wait to delve into these. Uh, last video, I got an imp a bunch of imprint titles. This time, another package appeared on the doorstep. More imprint titles. It's extensive here. Uh, I got the fabulous, well, ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Stains, which was fantastic. A punk movie from the early 80s with incredibly young, familiar faces um, as a young you know, orphan girl and her band who hits the road and kind of coming of age. Pretty great. Now, one I've not seen in a long while, City of God. This is next up on my list to watch from these titles. Not got around to it yet. Uh, we've got School Ties, which I really kind of liked. Um, great performances. Again, another amazing cast of, of actors. Uh, I thought it was really fun. Another one I've still to watch is Distant Thunder, although I tried to watch this, had a little bit of an issue with the disc, so hopefully it works next time I go to watch it. Uh, one of the bigger releases from this month was the After Dark uh, Neo Noir Collection 2. Six films, I'll just leave it down here. Anyway. Six films of which there's not a bad movie in amongst them. Blue Steel, fantastic 80s movie with Ron Silva, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. It's terrific. Clancy Brown almost steals the show every time he appears on screen. Great. Uh, there's Internal Affairs, which Richard Gere just knocks out of the park. Possibly his best role is the bad guy in this. You've got Andy Garcia as the good guy. These two cops butt heads as one is breaking the law and the other might be willing to break the law to catch him. Uh, we've got The Crimson Rivers in this, which was a French serial killer movie, which was 85% uh, perfect. I just wasn't quite happy with the ending, but you'll see that in the full review. 
Um, Way of the Gun, uh, Christopher McQuarrie's debut directing film. Love of that film. This was fantastic. It was probably my winner from this set. It's been terrific. James Gray, a director I don't often really enjoy, directs The Yards, which turned out to be a fairly, a fairly competent movie with an unbelievably stacked cast. It was fine. Good even, but just you know, so close to being great. Uh, and then finally, we've got Narc, which, uh, what can I say about Narc? Joe Carnahan's uh, debut film is just phenomenal. I absolutely adore it. I think there's amazing performances from Jason Patrick, from Ray Liotta. Again, you'll get to that in the review when I cover it. One that I haven't opened as yet, and it's after I've watched City of God and Distant Thunder, it is next, and it's the directed by Roland Joffe set which has The Killing Fields, The Mission, Fat Man, A Little Boy, City of Joy. I'm sure I've seen The Killing Fields years ago. And you know what? The last time I had a director set, uh, it was amazing. I'm looking forward to diving into this one because uh, it's a lot of things I don't know here. Hopefully it'll be fun. On to the last little bundle. So I got Remember the Night from Indicator. It was the only title they released in December. Um, Barbara Samick, Fred McMurray sold, can't wait for that uh, picked up Clerks 3 to round out the trilogy, I, I just it's fantastic, it, it finishes off in a real emotional high I think it works tremendously well terrific um, a couple of movies that you've seen me review already hopefully is The Radiance titles Big Time Gambling Boss which I thought was phenomenal and would highly recommend to just about anybody. I think you would find something great in this. Uh, next up it was The Working Class Go to Heaven, which was, again, really good. Uh, I think uh, Volonté gives an a, a absolutely astounding performance in this one, and it was just a real treat. Uh, two releases that I just get in. Run Man Run, Masters of Cinema series, Sergio uh, Salima's uh, Run Man Run starring Thomas Millian as Cachillo and it's phenomenal it is absolutely fantastic it's one of those spaghetti westerns which is kind of driven along by the performance by Millian who just owns the screen I had such a fantastic time with this uh, I, I just, you know, uh, great and next up in the line of duty series was Royal Warriors starring Michelle Yeoh and this one was really good as well. It goes into some really silly places, uh, but the action is pretty fantastic. And I really love the trio of heroes that we've got here, which were just terrific. Okay, so that's a bunch of movies that I added into the collection. <laughs> a whole lot. So we're going to jump into my letterbox. We'll have a look at what I watched and see if I managed to take anything out of the collection over the past three weeks. To three weeks, read right about that, yeah. So let's have a look. Here we go. So, uh, the last time I was here, the last movie I watched was Come Back Little Sheba. So, I started off with some Vinegar Syndrome titles Santo versus Dr. Death and Sworn to Justice, both a little bit uh, just, just not great. Close, I'd say I preferred Santo more. Sworn to Justice was a little bit tired. Santo, we could have used more Santo, but it was a kind of fun movie and I'd be interested in seeing more with that character. North Dallas 40 was a fantastic film. I really enjoyed this Nick Nolte week in the life of a pro ball player who's kind of lost his love of the game. Dirty Dancing, it's a five-star movie. It gets a heart, it's a comfort film. It's one that I really enjoy and just had a whale of a time revisiting. Save the Tiger, I enjoyed I think it has some issues, but the performance by Jack Lemmon was fantastic and had some really interesting sub-characters, side-characters that were just great to see interact. Uh, then we had the Roadhouse 4K, which again, uh, terrific. It just looked amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Couldn't believe it, um, how good it was. We get Louis Mal's Pretty Baby, which I watched on Christmas Eve. Um, what a film to watch on Christmas Eve. It, it was great. Uh, I think I'll appreciate it more in a second watch. A little bit uh, disturbing and uh, not what I expected to start off with, but I, I grew into the movie and the more I think about it, the more I appreciate it. Uh, that was that, that 
City, shocking a film. I couldn't finish Christmas Eve on that, so I watched Knives Out, which I think is just phenomenal. Boxing Day, I watched Hitcher in the Dark from Umberto Lindsay. Again, it's a rewatch. I like it. I'm not keen on the ending. That's about it. Uh, big time gambling boss, like I said, stunning movie, five star, uh, so controlled and masterful and for just over 90 minutes it was sheer perfection. The working class goes to heaven was an assault in the senses, Elio Petri directs the hell out of this, uh, Volonte uh, is absolutely mesmeric in the main role and it's just it just wears you down. I can't say it's a movie that I thoroughly enjoyed. I really appreciated watching it. Next up was The Molly Maguires, which I thought absolutely terrific. It was one of those movies that I I was almost resisting putting on. Threw it on one Sunday afternoon, and it was the perfect Sunday afternoon movie. Uh, Richard Harris, Sean Connery, absolute perfection. So much fun. Uh, the Rose Tattoo, I really enjoyed. Again, it's a story of two performances. Anna Magnani was a revelation, and Burt Lancaster was dumbfounding uh, with his choices, but I, I liked it anyway. Um, Stone Cold was the first of the Jesse Stone movies. Uh, I really liked this one. It's just a, a TV movie procedural. It did everything um, and gave me some great characters. Sudden Fury from Vinegar Syndrome was a really tense Canuck exploitation film, which I loved. Minimal characters, high tension, and a, a, a antagonist that I just despised. Uh, I rewatched Clerks 3 because it's Clerks 3. I am a big fan of that series. I think it's just such a fitting tribute. Uh, great. And it was almost my last movie of the year. Uh, the Shaolin Kids from the Juice of Kui box set, Cinematic Vengeance. It was fine. Uh, these Most of these movies have been fine. Not much to say there. I rounded off the year with The Thing in 4K. It's a favourite of mine, what more is there to say? Uh, I started the year with Miami Connection, which was phenomenal. So much fun. I just loved the hell out of that one. Uh, one night, I caught the Shawshank Redemption on TV, just as it was about to start, and I kept saying, I'll watch the first 10 minutes. I'll just watch until this happens. I'll just watch until this happens. And before I knew it, it was late into the, the early hours of the morning, I had work the next day and I just had enjoyed that film. From Hammer, we've got The Sword of Sherwood Forest, which I thought was a really uh, fun Robin Hood movie. Didn't reinvigorate that subgenre, but it was just entertaining. Here we have Solomon King. Uh, I thought it was, it was lost for a while. Uh, found and restored fantastically well by Dave Crocodile. Solomon King was a fine black exploitation movie but I don't know if it was much more than that Avengement was a movie I put on in the background because I'd seen it before to do some stuff end up being captivated by it I think Scott Adkins is terrific it's just a really fun film then we kind of delve into that uh, new noir set where I watched Blue Steel Internal Affairs Crimson Rivers spoke a little bit about them all fantastic what a day that was for movies um, then I kind of finished off that night with The Man From Uncle and The Menu Man from Uncle, I've seen several times. I just enjoy it. It should have got a sequel. It was pretty terrific. The menu, undecided on that one. I enjoyed the watching experience. I don't know if I'll go back to it. Uh, the next day, I watched The Way of the Gun and The Yards. The Way of the Gun, perfect. Absolutely love it. The dialogue is just amazing all the way. The Yards was, like I said, it's good. It was good, but against the rest of the movies in this set, it didn't live up to them. Narc was a, a terrific way to finish this set. Five stars, amazing performances, great direction, a, a real standout of a movie. Then we had A Challenge for Robin Hood, which was another Hammer movie from Indicator. Took me a little while to grow into this one. It was on shaky ground to start with, but eventually got better. Bloodbeat, like I said, I did not enjoy that one at all. A little bit... Um, just nothing really happens. It's a low budget. It feels almost regional horror. Just didn't, just didn't hit the mark for me. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous stains was pretty terrific. Like I spoke about, host of uh, 
unbelievably young, familiar faces in this one. Uh, yeah, just really great. Run Man Run was a four and a half I gave it. It's going to be a five the next time. I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it even more. It was just because of Millian's performance. School Ties I watched today, which I enjoyed. I didn't think I was going to like it. Uh, the cast really dragged me through it. Um, and because I, I feel that the story's not it's not as captivating or as gripping as I wanted it to be, but the cast sell the movie. And then I watched Royal Warriors, which I really enjoyed as well. I thought it was a hell of a lot of fun. So there we have it. That's so I, I started at 132. I took in 30 titles. I watched 31. <laughs> I'm down to 131, which I think is I'm down, which is the main thing. Here we go for Watch Pile 5 in a few weeks and we'll see if I am down any further than that. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you next time on Man V Film.